back y'all so it's april 18th and we're headed to the lake this afternoon to do some crappie fishing the bite's been really good we did just have a front move through hopefully that hasn't affected it too much but uh, we got a little john boat with us today and we've also got a couple new rods and reels we're wanting to try out i'm so excited i can't hardly stand it so we'll see you guys on the water So what I'm gonna do before I even make a cast, I've got new line on this reel right here and it's acting like it's got a little bit of line twist in it. So I'm just gonna throw the line in the water with no bait on it. I'm gonna let out about a hundred foot and we're gonna pull it around for a couple minutes, but just pulling it around lets it untwist a little bit. And a lot of times that'll help with your line twist, get a lot of the memory out of it. See, there's a twist right there. When I put it on, it just didn't feel like it it just felt like it had a lot of memory in it. So this is a little trick. It really helps sometimes. It'll save the day sometimes. And this is a pretty expensive line, so I don't want to I don't want to throw a bunch of it away over a bird's nest. I'll just set that in the rod holder and we'll pull it around for a minute. I got to do yours too. This is where we're gonna start out. It's just a steep, rocky bank in the back of a creek. Uh, got a bunch of laydowns on it. We're gonna start fishing some of these laydowns. Uh, the fish should be spawning. I'm sure some of them have already spawned. Some of them probably not yet. But uh, we're gonna start out in these treetops, see if we can figure out how deep they are, or if they're even here, we may have to move to a different spot. But this is where we're gonna start. You see, we got a big cedar right here in front of us. We're gonna fish the top of that cedar. There's one on the first cast. You gotta be kidding. First cast. I don't think he's gonna keep. They gotta be 10 inches here. He looks like he's probably about nine, which I really don't like to keep crappie under 10 inches anyway. I really like them about 11. All right, so he touches 10, but he's so close. I'm not gonna take a chance. I'm gonna throw him on back. But there's definitely some crappie on this tree. First cast, I let it fall probably about three foot. He nailed it. Ooh, I had another bite on the second cast. This might be a good day. We're getting way too close to our tree here. I don't have spot lock on this little John boat yet, but boy, I really, really need it. Once you start fishing with spot lock, it ruins you. You gotta have it. We're getting ready to take care of that though, because I just ordered the GPS module to go in this little XI3 here, and we'll have spot lock and all that stuff on this boat now. So I'm definitely gonna be using it a whole lot more once I get all that hooked up. Got him. Another one, that's uh, about nine inches. We might have to move, find some bigger ones, but we're gonna sit here and catch a few of these and have some fun first. Oh, there he is, got him. That might be a better one. I think it is. That might be a keeper there. Uh, he's about right at 10 inches again, I guess. I don't know, he might be a little longer. Fish is full of eggs. Yeah, he's a uh, 10 and a quarter, so we'll throw him in the basket. We got a fish basket we're hanging over the side of the boat. When's the last time you seen somebody do that? I wanna keep these fish alive because if we get a limit real quick, which is 15 here, then we'll start calling. And if we throw them in the cooler, we're not able to do that. Tree. That's another good one, isn't it? That's a keeper. 
10, oh, about wow. 10 and 5 eighths. So yeah, that's another key to throw him in there. So my dad was at a yard sale and this guy had a bunch of rods for sale, like ugly sticks, you know, old Shakespeare rods, some decent spinning reels on them and stuff. So he called me and he FaceTimed me and he said, hey, this guy's got a bunch of rods for sale. Do you need any of them? I can probably get them cheap. So he started showing me each rod individually. And when I seen this right here, I about had a heart attack. That's a G Loomis GLX, really expensive rod. So I said, well, how much does he want for them? And he said $25 and I almost felt bad, but I was like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and get them. So he got home, sure enough, it was in perfect shape. All the eyelets and everything are in here and they actually still make this rod. I think this is a pretty old rod, but they still make this rod today and it's $450 if you were to buy it new. It's six foot long, light action. It's rated for six to 10 pound line, 1 to 5 16th ounce lures. Not only did I get this rod and a bunch of other reels, but I got to looking through some of the reels the other day and I found this little reel in here and this is a Shimano Stratic. And I'm not sure how old this reel is. I know this was made before 2015, but if you were to buy this reel today, it would be $200. So either way, $25. I got a bunch of ugly sticks and stuff out of the deal. I got that Shimano Stratic and I got this G Loomis GLX, which is a great rod. And I got a little Fluger President reel on here with four pound P-line. It's probably the only way I would have ever got a G Loomis rod as if uh, I got it at a yard sale for $25. Kind of feel like I won the lottery. There's one. That might be a good one. Oh, he took a little drag. Oh, get the net, Landon. It's a good one. Monster. I think I, I got him in the top of the mouth. I went, oh, look at that one, son. There is big ones on that tree. He's about 12 or 13. Or she, because full of eggs but it hooked him good yeah that's the kind i want to that's i want 15 like that 12 and an eighth that's a good fish right there heck yeah nice fish so the bait that i'm using right now is actually a little miniature jerk bait it's made by a company called lunker city and I think Lunker City is the company that kind of invented the jerk bait with the sluggo way back in the day, as far as bass fishing goes. But I didn't buy these four crappie fish, and I actually bought them as kind of like a white bass skipjack multi-species bait. But I got to use them in the pond behind the house, and I got to catch some huge crappie on them. So I figured I'd give them a try today. And so far, I'm impressed. I'm not actually jerking it like a jerk bait. I'm just barely giving it a little twitch every now and then and kind of reeling it straight. And uh, with that little 132nd ounce head, it looks so natural in the water. And this color right here is called smelt. I doubt the camera will pick it up, but it's got so many different colors in it, depending on how you look at it. It's got blue, purple, green, black, white, good looking bait. There's one, caught him right there off the top of that tree. Vertical jigging. That's a keeper, ain't it? Eleven and an eighth. Another good fish. We was just getting ready to leave this spot. I said, I think we've uh, got too close and spooked him, and then boom, he hit. So we'll make a few more casts. That was not going to make it either. Oh, no. I broke it off. Broke off my little jerk bait, my little fluke. So on the second rod that I'm going to be using today, I've got an inch and a half slider grub tied on, 1 16th ounce head. And uh, this color is called Funky Monkey Shine. These are some old baits right here, been around forever, but they still catch a ton of fish. Uh, the only problem with these is they got a real thin tail back towards the back. And a lot of times a bluegill come up and bite it off. But that thin tail is also what gives it such a good action. Drum. Man, that 
things fight. <laughs> Yeah, not the right kind. So this has got to be my favorite rod out of the ones I own for crappie fishing. It's a six foot ultralight, sold by Temple Fork Outfitters, one piece. They got them in several different sizes. But it's an ultralight rod, but it's still got quite a bit of backbone from probably the, the second eye back. Really soft tip, but still really sensitive. It's just a good filling rod. I've got it paired up with a little 2000 size reel, three pound P line. And with a 132nd ounce jig, this thing will cast a mile. It's just a good filling setup for crappie, bluegill, trout, anything like that. Got him. That's a better one, wasn't it? Than what we've been catching in the last few. What is, is it a crappie? Oh, that's a good one. Get him. Hold him up there, Landon. Heck yeah, that's a good crappie. Landon caught that one on his own hand-tied jig. He's been getting into making some little crappie jigs, and I've been making a bunch of jigs that we're going to do some skipjack fishing with, so it's something fun to do on a rainy day. Man, they're knocking the fire out of it right there. I don't know how in the world I'm missing them. I don't know if they're following it off the bank or if they're out here deeper. I guess we need that live scope to find out. If you ain't scoping, you hoping. Black and gray. Natural color. White belly, but the white belly is gone. Oh, there's one. Oh, that might be a... Oh, I just seen a big color come up. But you can't tell on this rod. They all... Oh, that is a good one. Look at that. Man, I love this rod for crappie fishing. Yeah, that's, a, that's about a 12, isn't it? 11 and a half. Heck yeah. Nice fish. Boy, he was barely hooked, too. Look at that. Man! That's a bass, isn't it? Or a crappie. Landon's over here catching slabs on his hand-tied jigs. He's gonna have to make me one like that. Yeah, 11 and a quarter. You wanna measure yours? He looks like he's probably 11. 10 and 7 eighths. Almost 11. Mine did too. That's the end of your hand tied jig, there, ain't it? Yep. So, this has got to be my favorite way to catch crappie. Just throwing these little jigs around like this. And I like vertical jigging too. I got into that spider rigging and stuff years ago and I've still got all those long rods and stuff at home. It's fun, don't get me wrong, but normally when I'm cat fishing, I'm fishing from a rod holder unless I'm bumping. So when I come out here to do something different, I like to cast for them. That might be a good crappie. Oh, I think it is. Oh yeah, that's a keeper. That's probably the second biggest of the day if I can get him in. He's hooked right in the side of the mouth, so he's good chance I might lose him. He's in that thin part of the mouth. Come on, buddy. Heck yeah, that's a good crappie right there. He was hooked better than I thought he was. I'd say he'll go 12 inches. What kind of species you fishing for? <laughs> so this is old school crappie fishing we're just riding around finding trees that we like the looks of and fishing them and most of the boats now are running live scope and stuff and we're out here throwing our fish in a basket over the side of the boat with 2d sonar but hey we're having fun 
but I'm not against live scope. I think it's great. And if I fish tournaments, crappie tournaments, or if I was a guide or something like that, or if I crappie fished all the time, I'd have live scope. But for me, I just don't think I would use it enough to make it worthwhile because they are not cheap. There's a fish right there. That's not a bad one, but I'll probably throw him back. He's a little thin. Dead now. But they're biting pretty good today. We've caught crappie everywhere we went. It's that time of year. The wind's finally laid down. It's nice out here right now. It's gonna be a cold ride back though. Oh my gosh, it might be like it was. Man, that fish, you do? I got something that feels pretty good too. If it's a crappie, it's gonna be a good one. That. That's a nice one right there. He's little, but he's fat. Yeah, that's a that's an eleven and a half probably. Good fish. Same for mine. Right, go ahead and light the engine. Go ahead. Oh, our crappies! They'll get sick. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're gonna get a little closer to the truck before it gets completely dark because it is getting cold out here in a hurry. So we got one more spot we're gonna hit before we leave. So we're in about, there he is again. So we're in about 20 foot of water in this spot where we're catching the crappie suspended 10 foot or less. Not gonna make it. Look at all them shad. Something's chasing them, making them do that. That's what's chasing them right there. Yeah, that's a keeper. Reach down there and get him for me. I don't like the lifting bigger ones with this rod. What are you doing? It broke the line. Yeah, yeah I seen you grab hold that line. I thought, oh no. Broke at the knot, didn't it? It was a giant, wasn't it? He sat there for a minute and I was confused. Ow! What? This crappie just bit me. I swear it bit me. A crappie <laughs> bit you. They seem to be just in this one little area right here. All right, y'all, so we're gonna go ahead and call it a day. It's getting dark on us, but I wanted to show you all this mess of crappie we got here. We got close to 15 in there. We might have 15, but got a couple over 12 in there. Nice crappie, we're gonna be eating good. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this is something different than we normally do, but I think most people like crappie fishing, so I figured I'd take you guys along on this trip. But uh, thank you guys for watching. God bless y'all, and we'll see you in the next one.